Hello there. My name is Josue Diaz. I am a licensed architect in the state of California. In today's Archi Corner episode, you will see a small clip from a lecture that I had the privilege of presenting to the University of Little Rock, Arkansas. If you are interested in watching the full lecture, you can see it in my Patreon account. You can find the details to my Patreon account in the video description box. I hope you like it. Very similar to the bottom track, right? It is just a channel where your studs uh, fall into. But your top channel doesn't normally look like this. Actually, I did a section of what it normally does look like. So here you have a channel and it has slots or slats in it. So you can see there's, there's a bunch of slots. They're usually about one and a half inches or so. Every manufacturer is slightly different, but that kind of gives you an idea of what it is. So then through these slats here, you, you drill and you attach the top track to your stud. And then you see your stud doesn't go all the way up. There's, there's somewhat of a gap between your stud and your top track. Anybody... I ask a lot of questions, sorry. I just want to make this in, interactive. Does anybody know why we have these slats? Why, why, why couldn't it be like I showed it here earlier? Why can't it just be solid and you just screw it and you're done? Why does it, you know, why do we use this? Or where would we use these? If you needed to change, then you could easily remove it, I guess. Um. You're, you're getting close, so it has to do with a change or fluctuation, yes. Does that have to do with airflow throughout the building? No, <laughs> but we're getting close. <laughs> it is a natural event. I guess it's more for people here in California, I guess we don't get oh, that. Oh, is it for like um, earthquakes and stuff? Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's for earthquakes, right? Because... Nor, I don't know if you can see my camera too, because I see the presentation, but if you can see my, you know, my hands, it's kind of like, when there's an earthquake, you, you kind of have movement this way, right? And this way you have movement in every direction. So just like bridges, you have a fixed end and you have a, and a free end. You, you, have, you need to allow for movement to happen because what they discovered in you know, past earthquakes is that if you have two fixed ends, and, you know, if there's this movement, what happens is two things could happen. One, it could snap, right? It can snap something in half or it could bend it and you get cracks and whatnot. But if you allow for flexibility, then in case of an earthquake, then your wall can move up and down, but it won't fall over. And that's what you want. I mean, you don't want your building to to be earthquake proof, like nothing's going to happen to it. You, you need to let it move and be flexible enough so that if it does move, then, you know, it can do so safely. And that's why we use this. I hope you like that small clip. If you're a student and having me come to your school for a lecture is something that you think you want, talk to your professors about it. And if you are a professor and you would like to invite me to come for a lecture, feel free to reach out to me for details. Before you go, please don't forget to like the video if in fact you liked it. And if you haven't already done so, please don't forget to subscribe. If you think anybody else would like any of the Archie Corner videos, please feel free to send them a link. But for now, this is it. This is Archie Corner signing out.